And we are back. Uh, our featured guest tonight is an award-winning filmmaker whose film, The Band's Visit, garnered international acclaim and whose current film, Let It Be Morning, is Israel's official entry in this year's Academy Awards. Here to chat about the film is its writer and director, Iran Kolarin. Thank you for being on the show, Ron. How are you? Thank you for having me, David. I'm good. Before we talk about Let It Be Morning, I'd love to talk a little bit about some of the things that made you who you are. Um, where did you grow up and, and what was life like for you there? Oh, I grew up in Tel Aviv uh, in the 80s, which was more, you know, it was a smaller city then, more like... Uh, more homely and uh, small community. Then I lived most of my life in Tel Aviv. You're an accomplished filmmaker now, but where did the love for cinema kind of initially start? Is there a, is there a memory that you can trace it directly back to? I remember, first of all, it came from my father, I think, who was uh, uh, also a director in, in himself and a film editor. So I grew up sitting next to him while he was editing, you know, on Steinbeck film still. So, uh, uh, and every Friday he would make me make me watch like the, the the American film we had on TV, which you know were a lot of Hitchcock films. There he was a big fan of Hitchcock, and uh, so in some way I grew into it. It was quite natural to me to think about frames and movement and camera and dialogue. You've lived through a, quite a few momentous historical events in the Middle East. Do you see your life in Israel as having made you a different kind of filmmaker than you would have been if you were born, say, maybe somewhere else? I don't know. I think the films I do are connected very much to the reality around me and the reality that I at least I understand, or I think I understand, or I think I have my own specific point of view, you know, starting from the architecture of, of, of you know, the land that I come from, to the stories, to the conflicts, to politics, to everything, because, you know, it's natural for me, I'm part of this place. So I don't know if I would have been growing here in LA, so I might have had other interests in, you know, the films, but I don't know those hypothetical questions. I think there's something be beyond all that, a certain sensibility or a certain certain thought, specific kind of thought that you have, which is you, basically. <laughs> did becoming a filmmaker seem like kind of a feasible option for you growing up, or did your family want you to be something else entirely different? Oh, my, my family wanted me to be a lawyer. I actually, actually studied law for like three and a half years, just failing before the end uh, uh, because it wasn't for me. I mean, I, I was still searching for myself in many ways. I didn't know who I am, what I was, and I was studying law because it was a respectable uh, whatever. But I became much less respectable. Uh, so was there ever a point in your journey where you thought, ah, geez, you know, this, uh, maybe this isn't going to work. I, I may have to find a different job. I mean, I know for a lot of filmmakers, there's often kind of a moment like that, almost, it seems like often right before their big breakthrough. Did you have any of those moments? No, I, uh, I, I think, I think, first of all, I have I think every, even every filmmaker I met, at least, we have this feeling, you know, every film we finish, because every time you finish a film, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with it. You don't know what's your next project. You're always in front of this abyss, thinking, well, maybe I'll walk in a small restaurant somewhere if I don't have money, or I mean, and I think uh, those kind of fears are even growing bigger. <laughs> uh, this is maybe the reason why you can sometimes hear about those ultra successful people who are still, you know, doing terrible things, keeping, you know, climbing to a certain climax that is never there. So you're always on the verge of thinking, and actually it is, you know, all men's war car at the end of the day <laughs> are doomed. So 
uh, I think these fears are, to be honest, part of life. And um, of course, I had this feeling, uh, you know, before your first project, you're more of a... Yeah, I mean, it's usually the beginning of your life, so you are more uh, you you tend to have those these kind of thoughts later. I see remnants of your first film, The Band's Visit, in the subject matter found in Let It Be Morning. Do you see similarities between the two films? And, and I mean, was that something that you were drawn to, or am I reading too much into things? No, no, I think definitely in terms of style and tone and the combination of humor and tragic and pathos and uh tension and you know this uh all 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 in a very closed set that is uh sometimes turns into this little uh, theater of absurd you know so i think this is this is like all of my film have been around this area but i had more abstract films like the exchange which was much more you know uh artistic film i would say and i had beyond the mountain and the hills which was Uh, more uh, tragic and hard. And I think the band's visit and Let It Be Morning are kind of uh, a combination of... Uh, and I, th I really think that the Let It Be Morning is like a culmination of a lot of different emotion found in my films and especially the band's visit, yes. So, um, uh, yes, I do think there's... Great resemblance uh, or great connection, not resemblance. I don't recall much controversy around the band's visit itself. Um, did you expect to have any controversy with that film? Uh, to begin with, there was also, you know, around the band's visit, there were a lot of uh, uh, debates and con conversation. And I believe this is actually a good thing for a film. I don't do film to evade uh, I mean, I don't do films to do something in spite or make a controversy in spite, but I think, you know, once I touch those subject matters, once I do it the way I do it in the special uh, human uh, assembly that I'm doing it, whatever, it draws people to a discussion, which I'm I'm very happy for and I'm, I'm proud about that. I mean, this is what films are supposed to be doing. So... Um, But I, I'm not going into film thinking, oh, I'm going to have a controversy. No, I'm going into film thinking I like those characters. They touch me. I like the story. I find myself in it. I can say something with it. I, I feel it in my heart somehow. This is what gets me. Well, let's chat about the, the new film, Let It Be Morning. Uh, what's interesting, and you, you touched upon it, is that with this film, you were approached by Sayed, uh, is it Kashua, right? Said about Kashua. making it. And for those who don't know, he's an internationally acclaimed author. Did you know who he was already? I, I, I mean, I'm sure. I, I mean, did, did you have any preconceived notions or opinions no. about him before you met him? Yes, of course. Said is quite famous in Israel. He had a column in the paper, a very funny observation of the life in Israel from a Palestinian point of view. So he was very well known and... And he had a very, he has still a very unique position, uh, telling his own very unique uh, story of uh, being in between cultures and, you know, in between the system. And of course, I knew him. I didn't know that specific book, which he offered the Let It Be Morning, his second book. I didn't know it. Um, but I was happy, of course, to read it. What made you decide this would be your next film? I mean, you didn't have to make this one. I mean, you could have probably done countless other things that may have been potentially on your plate. What made you decide this is the one to do and do it at this time? There was something about the book that drew my heart. There was there was something there, this, this state of siege, the state of closure. Uh, what, it, what does it feel like? And not necessarily why or, or, you know, reasoning or, or, you know, arguing about it, but just going for what is the state of mind of the seizure and the besieger, the closer and the one that's been, what is the, what is the human state of mind, what's going on? And I, I, I really, I really felt there was something uh, there that drew me.
I could see the film poster. I could see an image like in my head when he, when he said the story is about, you know, a small village, a Palestinian village inside uh, the Israeli territories. I mean, those are Palestinians with the... Uh, who are civilians, who are uh, citizens of Israel. And suddenly the, the one day the village is closed off. Um, it was very unique. It, 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 struck, uh, it struck, strikes very specific uh, gray area in the, in the existence here. And uh, it wasn't easy. <laughs> It, this one took time. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. 